y'all, it's officially summer break and we are ready to get back in the garden. Look, there's a butterfly behind me. The rhododendrons have been filled with bumblebees and butterflies lately. It's so nice to watch. Anyhow, we're gonna do our big winter sewing reveal. And if you remember last year, a lot of my stuff got bit by frost, which it was 32 degrees last night, but we have better results this time. So we can't wait to share that with you. So stay tuned. So here we go. You guys know how I do all my starts. We start them in milk jugs, use some duct tape to wrap it up and it creates a mini greenhouse effect. We started our warm loving plants about three or four weeks later than we did last year. So just to be sure that if a frost came that they weren't sticking up everywhere or pushing against the sides and it would freeze because that's what happened to us last year. So even though I did them much later, we still had a scare last night, but everything is okay. Let me show you a couple things that I had already opened um, just because they were getting so big and they needed to, to grow a little bit more. So here is some pickling cucumbers that I did. We have some mini whites. And as you can tell in here, all these seeds were started at the same time, but some are huge and some are still a little bit smaller. So um, I'll plant these out hopefully in the next day or two. Those are pickling cucumbers and here's our fresh eating cucumbers. Here's a couple tomatoes that actually can do well if it's a little bit cooler. This year I tried to buy I tried to research and buy more seeds that were appropriate for our area. We're in zone 6A, however, it's not quite as good as 6A could be because of where we live and our elevation. And um, there's two creeks in the bottom of our property and we're in the valley. And so all the cold air settles behind us. And so we've learned the hard way that even though it says 40 degrees, it may be 40 degrees in our neighbor's house, but like I said, this morning it was 32 degrees at our house. So we have to watch out for that. Anyway, so I tried to buy tomatoes that can handle some more cold. Um, one of these is called the subarctic tomato. Those are doing good. And they are not, um, they're more of a determinate tomato, so they're not gonna get as tall. And um, that is fine with me. But I do wanna show you, if you can see, there is, a teeny tiny right there. See that tomato? A teeny tiny tomato in there. And so I'm not going to plant that one out today in the garden. I will pot that one up in probably a red solo cup or something and give it a little bit extra time. And this one's called Sophie's Choice. I got um, Sophie's Choice and Subarctic from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. So I'm getting distracted because there are some gorgeous butterflies in front of me. <laughs> I wish you guys could see them. There's a blue one over there and there's a yellow one over here. They're so pretty. Okay, so let me show you a couple more tomatoes. So a couple of things about this jug. This is not good for it. Actually, you can kind of see, got a little crisped up by the frost last night. I did have it covered, but it still has a hard time um, when, it's, when it's covered. Yep, got a little crispy. Anyway, if the weather <laughs> permits, don't wait until they're this big because it's just, it's just not a good thing. It's not good for them. You see how it's pressed up against the sides? If it gets frozen really bad, it will kill all that foliage there. I like to plant them when they're more this size and not coming out of the jug so bad. But we are gonna take a peek. <gasps> These look beautiful. These are called Golden Girls. So if you notice, I already took the tape off and what, how I like to do this, they don't really have to be hardened off like a greenhouse kind of plant, but what I typically do is I take the tape off for a day and then I'll open the lid for a day and then I'll plant. Now in this case, I'm gonna start planting out today because it's June 1st <laughs> and we need to get these tomatoes in the ground and going. Um, but that's typically how I like to do it. And then, and it can stay in the jug open for a while because if the next few days is gonna be cold, you could close the jug back up. You don't have to put tape back on it. Okay, my favorite tomato ever, Kellogg's breakfast. I love this big orange tomato. And I only had two germinate. I planted five in here and I only had two. Um, the germination rates have been weird 
in my jugs this year. Last year, I think almost every single seed germinated and this year I wasn't quite the case. So I'll show you at the end what jugs did not germinate at all still and I really don't have any hope for them at this point. Here's probably my tallest tomato. Once again, the very tippy top of it got a little bit frostbitten. This is a mortgage lifter on one side and Mountaineer Delight on the other. Um, I wanted to start so many different kinds of tomatoes that uh, I put two different kinds in the jug. I really don't recommend that because it can get confusing, but I did it anyhow. This one's gonna be a little trickier to get out. Come on. There we go. So as you can see, it's a little damaged from being stuffed in that little hole, but tomatoes are so hardy, guys. They, they will perk right up and, and be okay. But notice here there are several smaller ones. These are probably still a little bit young. I'll probably pop them up and look at the difference. Wow, that's a lot of tomatoes. All right, I'm going to unveil the rest of the tomatoes and then we'll talk in the end about some of the things that I didn't have success with. So my peppers are these three jugs right here. I, I don't have really good luck with peppers out here. That's why I don't do very many. The two on the right did not germinate at all, which is strange. The one on the left is a mini bell and a pimento and they have germinated, but they are pretty tiny, maybe about that big. So we have to wait until they get a little bit bigger to plant them out. The only other one that I've been kind of disappointed in is this one right here. Um, let's see if I can show you, yeah, the ground cherry one. Pests um, like slugs and different things can still get in your jugs. Now it doesn't happen quite as often and it's better than being in the garden and they're just coming up, but the slugs keep getting into my ground cherry jug and chomping it down. It keeps coming back though. So hopefully it will be stronger for it, but it's still a little bit small. I'm probably have to wait another week before I can plant it out. So I'm very excited. I planted the ground cherries actually the same time as the rest of these tomatoes. So that just shows you how far behind it is because of the pressure from pests. So I think I know why my favorite two colors have always been blue and green. <laughs> it is gorgeous out here today. Actually, it's quite strange that we have like no clouds at all. Typically we do. So it's nice to see this. I think the ducks are mad. I think they want me to let them out. All right, girls, go ahead. Okay, y'all, here's what the garden looks like. It's a little messy in here right now because I used all these pots and the cups to cover up things yesterday or last night. The peas are finally starting to climb good. I planted these things forever ago and they have withstood so much. And so we have the first flowers starting to form and hopefully it won't get too hot too fast and we'll get some yummy peas from these. The milk jugs in here are all summer squash and melons that I've started. And most of them, I think all of them, have germinated as you can see in there. Have some beans that have sprouted next to the peas. As you can see, we are just now getting started. Thanks for hanging out with us today. It was really great to show you all the winter sewing jugs and give you a peek of what's happening in the garden. Hope you all come back. Thank you.